Forge FC is ready for their upcoming match. Simply stunning stuff. And finally, their goal. My word, what a rocket. Now, let's get you up to date with Anthony Urcioli and Match Day Preview on the Forge Audio Network. Hello, you Forge faithful. Anthony Urcioli with you. It's the Forge Audio Network. It's the Match Day Preview. By the way, this is the official home of your reigning, defending, undisputed Canadian Premier League champions, winners of three of the last four, four straight finals appearances for Jeff C. A huge one, a monumental clash this weekend on Sunday at York Lions Stadium in North York, Ontario, the 905 Derby for Jeff C. And York United going head to head, 7 30. Your kickoff time on Sunday, July 9th. And why is this so monumental? Well, just take a quick peek at the standings. By the way, Forge and York both at 14 matches on the season. We are exactly at the midway point of the uh, CPL schedule. So now it's time to, to, to start bearing down a little bit here. Uh, the time where we can say, you know, it's too early to look at the standings. That That's, I, I mean, I'm looking at the standings after week one. That's just the way I do it. But for some of you, I mean, we, we can't use that anymore. Um, this is, we're in it now. We're in the thick of it. We're in the midway point. Forge FC in third place at the table with 19 points. York in second place with 20 points. Forge, one point back of York United. And with this expanded Playoff format this season with five teams getting in. Um, finishing first and second is huge. Finish first, you you, you get, uh, I mean, you get a trophy, right? For the best record of the regular season. But maybe even bigger than that, if you finish in the top two, um, your path, let's say, to the CPL final, a little more advantageous um, with this kind of page playoff format that we have. So, uh, second spot's huge, and Ford's one point out of it, a point back of York, which means, um, listen, end of the day, Forge is still in control of their playoff seating, even looking at the fact that Pacific in first place, um, they also have two matches in hand on both York and Forge, and they're at 25 points. Um, not insurmountable, but certainly an uphill battle, so... Focusing on the task at hand, and that is York United well within striking distance and an opportunity to take matters into your own hands and leapfrog them without any help from anybody else. Breaking it down a little bit, home record for York, not very strong. Sixth best in six home matches this season. They have just seven points, minus two goal difference, just two wins in six matches at home this season. And uh, that leaves the door open for Forge FC, third best away record in terms of total points. They have 10 in seven matches, uh, three wins, a draw, and three losses. So uh, an opportunity to be had here, perhaps. Head-to-head, Forge FC, 11 wins, uh, seven losses, and one draw against York. These two clubs have met twice this season already. They will meet two more times, including this match on Sunday. Uh, and in those two matches, the away team came away with three points. First, it was Forge winning at York 1-0. And then it was York breaking the hearts of Forge fans with that uh, last second winner to put York out front 2-1. And that's how that ended at Tim Hortons Field. So split down the middle so far. You know, we, we don't have to get too deep into the last match for Forge FC. A lot of things went wrong. Um, despite some some good moments, just not enough good moments. And we're, we're back to kind of the same thing, right? They gave up the first goal again, a recipe for disaster. And it was in this one. They had to play catch up all game. It just took them out of their rhythm, out of their flow. It, it affects, it doesn't matter who you are, what your mental state is. When you're playing from behind consistently, it just, it, it does something to you. It just, you expend more energy. Uh, you start, you know, when you have players playing with a lot of pride, you start wanting to do things. You want to be a difference maker. Unfortunately, this team is at their best when they're working as a cohesive team. And it's easier to do that 
when the score is either level or you're playing with a lead. When you're playing from behind, it just it does something. It, there's some urgency there. It just builds up a little more anxiety. Um, and you're just not the same team. You're just not. It doesn't matter who you are. And Forge is not immune to that. Seven straight matches now, Forge FC have given up the first goal. That is not good. And and that's that's going to put you behind the eight ball. And it has up to this point. And it's been a reason for some of the inconsistencies in the results for Forge FC. Now, that'll come up again in the three keys. I can guarantee you that because it has almost every week. And it's, until something changes, it, it won't go away. Um, but just kind of painting a picture here. If I look at the top 10 players in this league, under the stat category of big chances created, two Forge players are in there. Tristan Borges, tied for second. Kyle Becker, tied for third in that stat category of players creating big chances. Now, let, let's, let's even zoom out a little bit here. Big chances per team. Forge FC and York United tied for second with 26. Pacific has 29 there in the lead. So these are two clubs that create a lot, but York does not have individual players in that top 10 category like Forge does. And you have Borges and you have Becker there. This team is creating. Forge is creating. They're creating plenty of big opportunities, big chances. Now, some of it, has just been the fact that they just haven't been good enough in the final third. The finish, that, that clinical finish just has not been there. And it, it, and, it, and it has to be. You have to bury these chances. Because as we've seen, when you let these chances pass you by, you leave yourself open defensively, on the counter, and that has burned Forge consistently in over the last month plus. Now, some bad luck involved in that as well. Forge FC, they lead the league in hitting the woodwork, hitting the post. Seven. That's two more than Pacific, Calvary, Atletico, Valor. Um, bad luck. I mean, when you look at that, it's, it's, I mean, you want to say it's bad luck because we know that when you're talking about hitting the woodwork, we're talking about a matter of just inches and it hasn't gone Forge's way. Now, I found this interesting. We talked about big chances created. What about big chances missed? Forge is second with 17. Not a big surprise based on what we've seen. York, number one in big chances missed with 22. That's five more than Forge FC. So Forge is not the only club in this match. In fact, we may be looking at the two definitive clubs when it comes to just not capitalizing on your opportunities, um, just creating but not being able to finish, some bad luck, although Forge... I mentioned the seven posts, York have hit two. So they haven't been as unlucky in terms of just that game of inches. Uh, but you, something something has to give here between these two clubs. You would think shots per match. Forge FC lead the league with 14 shots on target. Forge are in second with 4.5. So they're getting shots. They're hitting the target. And most of all, they are leading the league in possession, something that we are very used to. No different this season, 56.6%. Here's what's wild. Ball possession. Forge FC, the number one ball possessing team in the league at 56.6%. Pacific, who's just, I mean, really just running away in terms of those kind of offensive stat categories, not just in the standings, but, I mean, their goal score, their goal differential. Pacific's been just a, a unit this season. Ball possession per match, 49.7%. Now, you look at that, and it could be because they are leading so much that that they're willing to give up possession in those moments in, in lieu of, um, you know, defending, basically. So that's where that kind of lines up for me. Uh, but York is just at 50. 50.5%. So th th this is right. I mean, we've been, and by the way, that's not accurate crosses. I, I threw this in there because this one stood out accurate crosses forge lead the league. So their deliveries are there. They're creating their crosses are getting in and connecting with teammates. Just that finish has not been there. And you don't need to single out any individual players because it really hasn't been one player individual. It's just, on the attack, 
Forge, they've just not been able to put away their chances. So with that, we're going to bring our guest in because Benedict Rhodes has been keeping an eye on York United and, um, yeah, we need some answers because we're just we're looking at the stats. We want a little more in-depth analysis here on our opponents this weekend. So with that, CanPL.ca analyst Benedict Rhodes joins the Match Day Preview. All right, Benedict, uh, thanks again for joining. A regular on the program. And I, I got to tell you, I'm looking at these two teams. And in terms of teams that like to create a lot of chances but have had trouble finishing I think these might be the top two teams in the league in, in that regard. Um, so, I mean, just from a York perspective, has that kind of been the story this season, that it's a team that's able to generate, uh, but maybe not quite able to capitalize on a lot of those opportunities? Yeah, definitely. And their, their two main strikers, Asazi Di Rosario and Brian Wright, have combined for two goals this season, both of them from Di Rosario. One of them was just this past weekend on a pretty big deflection as well, so... They're, they are so they're they're getting good opportunities. I think Di Rosario has one of the highest expected goals in the, in the league among individual players. But you know, they're just not putting the ball in the back of the net at the moment. Like you said, similar to how Forge are playing at the moment. Yeah, and it looks at you know you look at the table and and it looks like Pacific. I mean, there's still you know still half of a season to go. Pacific though, separating themselves a little bit, and teams like Forge York, bit of a dogfight for for. Again, both teams with an opportunity to still finish first, of course, but it looks like these are the clubs that are kind of battling for that second spot right now. Yeah, for sure. You know, some people call it like a, a six-point game, if you will. Like, you know, if one team pulls away by three points, the other team you know, doesn't. And both these teams have games and uh, played more games in Pacific as well. So, uh, you know, it's a big opportunity for both these teams to not only make a statement that, you know, we, we can we can still win this, but also, you know, play against each other, a rivalry game as well. You know, it's a... So they have a pretty exciting matchup, I think, at York Lions Stadium. Yeah, it's interesting. I, you, I, again, I haven't, I've really mostly just seen York play when they're playing Forge, and you don't always get a good, um, let's say, a look at clubs when they're playing Forge because teams sometimes play a little differently against Forge, where they'll give up some possession and try to win on the counter. But York, though, just on a game by game basic basis, what kind of tactics uh, are we looking at from this club? Yeah, it's a team that likes to, to play in wide areas. You know, they have some, some very talented players uh, wide, but also in central midfield, you know, this game will be, I think, won or lost in the middle of the field. But, you know, there's, there's kind of the, the three, I guess, are Mobabuli, former former Forge player, of course. He's, he's going back to suspension for this game. And uh, Jeremy Gagnon, Lampere, and, and Brem Sumaro are proving to be a pretty good duo uh, in the middle of the park as well. And Osama Alou, who recently is, he scored again at, at Vancouver and, uh, you know, all those players are capable of playing very well defensively, but also, you know, making things happen and, and transitioning well and getting the ball off the pitch quickly, uh, which can potentially catch a team like Forge off guard on, on a counterattack. Yeah, the, the counterattack has been something that that has worked against Forge maybe a little more this season than it has last season. I think teams are still approaching. You know, last year, a lot of teams tried to, to beat Forge on this, this counter style of tactic and um, it didn't seem to work as much last season. Uh, why has it just been been maybe burning Forge a little more this year than in years past? I think maybe the last few weeks in particular, you know, Forge maybe looking for a goal. They're maybe putting a few extra bodies forward to try and, and get bodies in the box and, and find a goal. And when they do that, you know, they, they leave their defense exposed a little bit. And you know, I think the game when they were away in Vancouver a couple of weeks ago, for example, you know, there were two goals scored in span of about five minutes of each other where both of them were, on those quick counterattacks of the field where, you know, maybe one one misfortunate slip or one one key moment or one pass that just slips by a defender or something and, and, and the other team's gone. Uh, so I think that, that's something that York's going to try to exploit as well and something that, you know, Forge needs to maybe clean up a little bit. You know, York has not had a lot of success at home this season. Um, I admittedly have not been to a game at York Lions Stadium yet. I know Forge fans are well-traveled in that regard heading over uh, just to the GTA, but I, I mean, I don't, it's sometimes it's tough to figure out why teams are just better on the road than they are away from home. What is it like um, at York Lighton stadium for a York match? You know, we, we got to see what Halifax is like, which is always hostile grounds for any team visiting Does York. I don't, I get the feeling they're not quite at that level yet, but what is kind of the, 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 the environment? What is the reception for this club? What, what can fans expect when they attend a match at York Lions Stadium? 
Yeah, I don't think anyone in the league really compares to the fans in Halifax. But, right. uh, you know, <laughs> you know uh, York, York Line Stadium, they have some passionate fans, you know. There's the section right behind the goal of, of the most you know, vocal fans, I guess. They have, they have the smoke going, they have the flags going. And, and uh, you know, that can be intimidating for any road team, I think. But also, you know, he's mentioned Forge fans travel well. They'll, I'm assuming they'll be there in large numbers as they were last time. And, uh, you know, I think that'll make for an exciting sort of off-the-field matchup as well between the two sides. So, I mean, there's nothing we can really point to in terms of just why York have maybe struggled a little more at home this season. I don't think there's anything in particular to that. I think maybe just away from home, you know, playing a bit more uh, a bit more pressure maybe, playing away from home and, and maybe getting up for those games a little bit more. And and uh, I think, you know, if they can start applying those same sort of uh, mentality to playing at home as well, I think that will probably serve them well. You know, watching that, uh, you know, watching Canada and that match against Cuba and seeing – two CPL players on the field at the same time. It, it just, I, I think, you know, when this league was created, we almost got spoiled a little bit because things happened quicker than we thought, you know, big transfers early on. And, you know, we saw Forge of success at the CONCACAF level and things kind of started moving quickly. And maybe we took for granted the fact that some of these things maybe happened quicker than even we had planned for. So when you see two CPL players on the field for Canada, I mean, what is that kind of a, it's a nice message to, to send, I guess, that, that these players belong. Yeah, for sure. A couple of days after Canada Day as well, we were celebrating, uh, you know, the players in this league. I believe it's been over 75,000 minutes, I think, for Canadian under 21 players so far in this league. I believe that number's correct. Uh, so to see two of them, you know, two players who played the university level in Canada, two players who, who played at Calvary and, and then Dom Zator, of course, going to York and then moving overseas, both of them. So it's kind of a, it's proof that that pathway works and, and proof of, of the what the Canadian Premier League is all about, really, which is developing players for the national team. And Latoury, especially, you know, he's, he's, he's a young player and he could play for this national team for another 10 years if he's, if he's good enough and, and available. So, uh, you know, I think that's just proof of, of the concept, I guess, of the Canadian Premier League starting in the first place. It, it always surprises me a little bit. And it's almost, you, you wonder if there's maybe just a stigma to the fact that you know, seeing, you know, uh, a lot of times when you're selecting squads, you look at the pedigree, you look at where they came from. And sometimes some players just get excluded based on, on you know, their their resume, their where they play. It's a little surprising to be that more keepers haven't gotten a look at the national level uh, from the CPL. That, that one surprises me a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, we had Marco Carducci get called up in the first ever season. He was the first I think, Canadian that called up to the national team from the CPL. But I agree, you know, you think, especially when you're playing in a tournament like this where it's about developing players. Uh, I do think, you know, even just as your third goal, you bring up Marco Carducci or, or you know, someone from this league and and, and give them that opportunity. And, you know, and they'll have that trickle-down effect as well where they'll go back and, and players in the league will say, like, look, this guy got called up. Why can't I get called up? Uh, and also, I think centre-backs as well. And there's a lot of good centre-backs in this league. And I'm quite surprised not to see someone like Neymar Didich at Pacific, for example, get called up to the national team. Yeah, and, you know, obviously Tristan Henry is a name that stands out in my mind as well, the numbers he's put up in the resume. But it is what it is, but I think seeing these players get opportunities, it does open the door just a crack more each time. So it's some good signs for the league and for the country and for the sport in this country. Benedict Rhodes, thank you so much, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again. All right, that brings us to our three keys to the match for Forge FC on the road, taking on their geographical rivals, York United. Key number one for Forge FC. I, I don't know how many different ways I can word this, um, but I'm not I'm not going to stop putting this in until something changes. Key number one, break the streak. Now, this might be a record for a key showing up in consecutive weeks, but but it, it this, this, this has to be broken. Forge has conceded first in seven straight matches. It has to come to an end immediately doesn't matter who you are. Playing from behind is an absolute killer, especially in this sport. It just, it sucks up energy. It, it just, it almost just dismantles your game plan. It hurts your tactics. It just, it affects you. And it is, again, we can talk about, it doesn't matter who the team is. You, you just, you cannot keep playing and, and keep using this recipe and of course, it's not intentional, but there just there has to be some urgency and a commitment to getting the first goal. It it, it just, yeah, I, I mean, it creates more angst uh, among players. I mentioned it earlier, but it bears repeating. You know, this team is just 
it's such a when things are going right the fluidity and the attack it is a well-oiled machine i mean it looks like it's being played by ai it's that just beautiful and fluid maybe ai is not a great example but you know what i mean i mean just machinery like almost like it's been pre-programmed everything looks so smooth um but it's hard to play that way when you're playing from behind because naturally as a player you want to make a difference you want to start doing things you start doing a little too much uh you start bearing down a little too much you know you're looking you, you you're taking an extra look at the goal rather than just relying on your instincts because you're trying to make it perfect and it's just it's not it, it takes its toll playing from behind and so that needs to end with this match at york united key number two for four jeff c Sheet cleaning. Listen, always a good idea to clean your sheets. Maybe mm, once a week. Maybe I'll even give you once every two weeks. Even. That, that's that's the furthest I'll go. But in Forge's case, the last time Forge has pulled off a clean sheet, shut out their opponent, May 23rd. It was a one nothing win against Atletico Ottawa. Since, they've averaged nearly two goals against per match. This team needs to commit to disciplined, patient defense. Patient, the key word. They've been way too aggressive in some of their defending, and it's left them susceptible. Too much 1v1 defending. The team, you know, th this team, by the way, it takes a lot of pride in their defending. We know this club is the offensive juggernaut it's been, but they take a lot of pride in their defending, and you know they are not happy with their results and the amount of goals they've been given up. But you have to defend as a team. This 1v1 defending is not going to work. They're putting themselves in situations where players are being kind of left on an island. It has to be a team effort. The team has to be dedicated to this. Patient defending. Patient being the key word. You don't have to be too aggressive. They don't need to take risks and win possession back immediately. Be mindful right, of what's gone wrong in the last several matches, the way they've been beat on the counter. We're going to get that in a sec. Um, but it's patient. It's discipline. It's relying on your teammates to bail you out. You don't have to be overly aggressive when you're defending 1v1. Let's let's get back to these clean sheets that this team, it's everyone likes the feeling of, of, of clean sheets. And, and Forge, you know they do, and you know they've done it consistently. We know Tristan Henry's track record, but it has to be a team effort. Key number three for Forge FC, counter the counter. I mentioned it. League leading, 56.6% possession um, percent of possession per match that leads the league. Most of the goals conceded by this club, they're not because that teams are, are building an attack and breaking them down you know, bit by bit. Teams are relying on quick strikes on this club and counters. Game planning to beat Forge on the counter, it's nothing new. We've been seeing it for a number of years now. However, it's it's been working a little too much recently over the last month or two. York in particular, by the way, very dangerous on the counter. They like to attack wide. This team needs to be aware of the counter and it cannot be just one player getting back and defending these long balls on the counters either. It needs to be a team effort. Like I said, in the earlier key and if York in particular, not only do they like beating on the counter, they like doing it wide. What does that mean? It's going to be on forges, fullbacks, uh, wingers, holding midfielder, whoever it, it, it needs to be more than one player dedicated to coming back and helping out and preventing these goals on the counter. If you eliminated some of these goals on the counter Forge have given up, I mean, go back and watch the tape and how many of the times they've been beaten on the counter. I mean, take those away. And, and I mean, Forge is just, uh, they're, they're swimming in Ws. I mean, it's, it's three points consistently. That has been a killer for them. They have to be aware and they have to counter the counter. All right, we've said it all. There's nothing left that can be possibly said. All that's left is for this club to go into York Lions Stadium and try to secure those three points. Keep your eyes open, your ears open. Uh, three keys will be dropping on our social channels. I know you just probably heard them, but you can get 
a little bit of a different version, right? On on Instagram, specifically Twitter, Facebook, all those things. And if you're not subscribed, do so wherever you get your podcast, because there's Forge content delivered basically daily, courtesy of myself and Mackenzie. And don't forget, after Sunday's match, I will go live, instant, instant reaction after the final whistle. And uh, you can catch that on, on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter was acting up for us, as it was for everybody over the weekend. Um, so if you want to be safe, maybe, maybe use YouTube, but w- whatever, whatever, whatever you prefer. Okay. With that, we will talk to you very soon. Enjoy the match. Forge FC is prepared and now you are informed. This has been Match Day Preview with Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.